everyone has an opinion. Everyone has a favorite. Everyone has a hot take. Everyone has a, you know, a view on how LSU football should do things. And that's great. That's how it should be. I want all of your views to be shared, whether you think, you know, I'm an idiot, I'm a a stone-cold genius, a dumbass, whatever you think, I want to hear it. Whether you think Brian Kelly is doing the right things with with the team, whether Brian Kelly is, is, you know, losing you, you know, whatever, I want to hear it. Because that's the problem right now that we're coming in to, to find as LSU fans. Everyone is um, full of criticism for a team that's won four straight games. A lot of LSU fans full of a lot of criticism for a team that's won four straight games and has come from behind double digits to win a few of those games. So, you know, it come back from double digits in three of those games and technically should be undefeated if they would have made a single PAT or gone for it on that two-point conversion opportunity. Um, Instead opting for one, and the field goal was, uh, sorry, the PAT was blocked. LSU could be 5-0 right now, which is something we predicted before the season. We predicted that LSU would go 5-0, they would actually be Tennessee, and it would be a little bit before they picked up a few losses. And we got them, we got them at 9-3 on our our schedule preseason predictions, which we released that article about four or five days, maybe a week before the season opener. And we just thought, you know, the SEC is a little bit weaker than we than people are saying. And I think LSU are a little bit better than people are saying. And, you know, we're starting to see that some of that's true, some of that's not. Because I thought that Jaden Daniels will be able to unlock this receiving core a lot better than he has. I thought this receiving core would play it a lot better than they have. I thought this offensive coordinator would get the receivers involved a lot better than he has. And so here's the thing. While everyone has a strong opinion on the offense, to the point where I'm hearing people say, we shouldn't have gotten rid of Miles Brennan. We shouldn't. We should give Garrett Nussmeyer the football. And they've got, you know, their mind filled with a bunch of stereotypes about Jaden Daniels and the type of quarterback he is because of a few things that they see, of course, full of stereotypes. I think you know exactly what I'm talking about. And, um, you know, (laughs) hearing stuff like that is almost ridiculous because it's like, I get it. Jaden Daniels threw for 80 yards, 80 yards. No one has repped the receiving core better or stronger than LSUodyssey.com has with our articles, with, with our interviews. We've interviewed Jack Besh, Malik Neighbors, um, Chris Hilton Jr., uh, who else on the list? I mean, it's it seems like we've interviewed almost every single one of these receivers or their parents. And, um, you know, we, we thought this would be a, a historic receiving core for LSU. Could they still be? Yes. But I'm telling you, with five games now out of the picture, that's a huge chunk of the st- of the season statistically. They're going to have to make up for a lot of lost time quickly. But really, when everyone's got all these opinions on the passing game, everyone's got all these opinions on who should be quarterback down to the point. It's almost a quarterback war. Um, you know, there's people wanting Walker Howard, freshman, to take the reins. You know, Everyone's got even an opinion, you know, everyone's criticizing, you know, the people who are criticizing Kelly and and Denbrock and Daniels, you know, there's there's criticism all over the place, there's criticism of the criticism, there's just straight up criticism, there's uh, game film studies that are a little bit tweaked to whatever your interpretation is, if you like Jaden Daniels, you show the things that Jaden Daniels did right on your film study, so that you paint a certain picture, or if you think he did it wrong, and, and should be replaced at quarterback or, or, or has to get better, whatever, you have a lot of things to show that can show Jaden Daniels in that light. And so you've, you're seeing a lot of things, a lot of times where people are trying to strike 
with their take while the while the iron is hot, you know. With the, with the Auburn game being so pot boiling and tense and emotions running high and people not even listening to to the takes before they're reacting and just going off, and people getting pissed off at each other and um, people b- trying to find any any blame they can for what's going on wrong with the LSU passing game. But let me tell you this. These players don't give a damn. Okay. These players don't give a shit what you or I think. Because... While we may be pissed off about their lack of targets, lack of yards, touchdowns, who did we see first to celebrate with Greg Brooks Jr. with his interception? Who did we see celebrating the most post-game in the locker room? Malik Neighbors, Kayshawn Booty, Jack Besh. The three best receivers on the team celebrating wildly. Because at the end of the day, it's about wins. That's what they want to be remembered for at LSU is winning. And they haven't tasted it enough the last two years. So this was a big deal for them to get that win at Auburn. This is an Auburn team, Auburn team that beaten LSU the last few years. So this was, this was a big deal. And I know Jaden Daniels had a, had a players-only meeting between him and the receivers, which is fantastic to hear. And, you know, he knows. Jaden Daniels knows. He cannot do this alone. Surely his advisors behind closed doors, just beyond Joe Sloan, the quarterback's coach, beyond Brian Kelly, people within his family have to be telling him, Jaden, you can't take these type of hits. You have to get this defense to back the hell off of you. And the way to do that is by throwing the damn ball. With accuracy, with poise, and with production. We have not seen that from Jaden Daniels yet. We've seen glimpses. We've seen flashes. We need to see four quarters of Jaden Daniels throwing the football brilliantly with poise with accuracy with timing we we, we gotta see it I know Jaden Daniels can do it that's the thing there's people out there who think Jaden Daniels is really hot garbage and he's never going to improve and yada 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 I don't buy into that at all what I buy into is this is an entire team An entire staff, an entire program that is getting its shit together. Game by game, snap by snap. It's not going to be perfect. Hell, we probably haven't even seen the worst of the cough-up games yet. We probably will see a worse cough-up game than Florida State that we'll all be haunted by and angry about and have our hot takes about. Florida State times 10 or something. You know? We haven't... At the same time, we haven't seen this team blow a lead. We haven't seen this team, you know, fail to respond in the second half. We've seen this team come out sluggish for three out of five games on offense. Defensively, for two of those five games. This is an offense. This is a this is a complete coaching staff that is getting right day by day. Everyone is figuring this out together. You know, it's just like what Brian Kelly said, you know, post game. His post-game speech to the players after the Auburn win. He said, now you know how to do this. Once, maybe it's an accident or a fluke. Twice, you got some momentum. Three times, it's a habit. They had three wins in a row. 
Now they get their fourth. Three wins is a habit. Four means it's becoming consistent. Consistency. That's what LSU are going to try and provide on Saturday against Tennessee. Consistency. I believe you'll see it from this defense. I believe this defense will give up some plays, of course, because this is Tennessee. This is college football. This is offensive football. Offenses run the show in football nowadays, whether it's NFL, whether it's college, whatever. It's not like LSU are going to be able to pitch a shutout or keep Tennessee under 24. If LSU are able to keep Tennessee under 24, they're winning this game 100%. Right? Right? That's the thing. That's the thing that's really interesting about this game. And that's why I believe LSU fans need to be positive here. Okay? Yes, you want to be the guy that said, I told you so, this or this or this, this factor or that factor is going to come back to rear its ugly head. and Oh, God. But, you know, I don't even think much, many of you even enjoyed this win. You know? I think many of you just like, whipped yourself like uh, Paul Bettany in, uh, in in the Da Vinci Code. Like Opus Day or something, you're just like, I must pay penance. Why are LSU throwing the ball for only 85 yards? Like, I get it. I get it. It's a far cry from the 2019 team where, I mean, they put up 85 passing yards, you know, on a dr- in a drive. In a drive and a half, you know, like. So, you know, I get it. But we have to be very appreciative and very proud of what's going on here. Okay? When you look at Texas A&M floundering and looking at just crazed, just looking toxic. Auburn looking toxic, looking like they can't maintain anything. Even a 17-point lead over LSU. Their quarterback situation is so just out of order. When you look across the SEC, Georgia, a four-point victory over Missouri. Okay. Like, I've been saying it all offseason. Alabama have lost their starting quarterback. Who knows how long or what, but we've seen this kind of uh, this uh this storyline with Alabama quarterbacks before, injury prone. Okay, what does this all mean? This means that the SEC wins or losses, whatever, aside. These teams are weaker than you projected. Okay, they might even be weaker than I projected. But I've been saying all offseason, this SEC conference is really not as strong as people are claiming. Texas A&M, number six. Number six ranking to start this season. Are you kidding me? I'm not even talking about hindsight. I'm talking about what the hell are you doing right then and there to give them that ranking. Someone should have their job stolen from them for that. Okay. So LSU have, have a big chance here. If LSU can put together a couple wins here against Tennessee, against Florida, against Ole Miss, leave October with those three big wins, heading into the dirge of November, where you've got Alabama on my birthday coming into Death Valley, you got Arkansas, who also don't look even close to what people were projecting. Arkansas have one of the worst pass defenses, although Dwight McLaughlin, three interceptions out of five appearances, you know, really happy for him, the former Tiger, Landon Jackson, getting a few sacks as he plays some football for the first time in a long time. Um, very happy for those two former Tigers, but Arkansas really not not as good as people were were forecasting as well, calling them the second best team in the SEC West and 
buying their stock huge. It's still a long season. Still such a long season ahead, but if you believe that this LSU team is going going to get better and better by the game, that they're going to improve in certain places, and maybe, you know, they'll take a regression here or there, you know, mistakes and, and, and bad plays will happen here or there, an injury here or there. All in all, all in all, LSU already have, you know, half of the win totals I projected basically with four. Most were predicting LSU would have two or three losses at this point with loss to Mississippi State and a loss to Auburn. So here's the thing. This is a team that could be very well undefeated if they actually like played up to their best the entirety of the uh, of the Florida State game. This is a <laughs> team that should be undefeated that came from behind down 13 against the air raid offense to beat Mississippi State by 15. Okay. This is a defense that are only giving up 293 total yards of offense. And this is a running game that we've been able to put over 200 yards on the ground rushing for the last few games. I understand they're you know, starting two freshmen on the offensive line. We've got a freshman tight end who the offensive coordinator and head coach seem hell-bent on keeping in there every damn snap. Um, you've got You've got some things that are rough, some things that look great for LSU, some things that could be forecasts of some danger for LSU. All in all, if you really do believe that this LSU team uh, not that good and are about to get their comeuppance or something, I don't know what to what to believe with that because I gotta I gotta tell you, this LSU team. I mean, they're surprising me even. Okay, the turnarounds they've made, how many turnovers they've forced, number one in the SEC. I knew this defense would be sick. But I didn't know this defense would be this sick, okay? I knew this defense would be fun to watch by the virtue of all these talented players we've been talking about for so long, we've been watching for so long, and now everyone kind of gets into into place now. And we're going to see if they're going to succeed or not, and now we're, we're really liking what we're seeing from guys like Harold Perkins flying all over the place, you know, Jay Ward continuing to be a Thorpe Award uh, worthy safety, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, LSU really looking good defensively. Going into the Tennessee game, you've got to feel good about your defense. Got to feel good about your secondary and how they have really upped the ante. But once again, before we really get deep into our LSU Tennessee previews, throw away all the stats, throw away all the numbers only number that matters is 4-1. That's all that matters. 